So today's panel, I think, and it's been a remarkable the last three days, represents one of the most important conversations that we can have, and that is understanding the role of the United States Congress, the United States co-equal branch of government, and what the President says or does not say is totally dependent on this legislative branch, the Congress, the House of Representatives and the United States Senate, enacting legislation, spelling out the legislation, and ultimately funding the legislation itself. That is the role of the United States Congress in a co-equal branch of government. So today's session is about the role, the importance of this congressional engagement on global aid, looking to the past, celebrating the past, which has been very much of what this conference is all about, but also looking to the future. Indeed, one of the most striking things about PEPFAR and the U.S. global AIDS response is the congressional support, as you'll see today, in a bipartisan way that helped lay the groundwork for the creation of PEPFAR. Repeal the pledge for PEPFAR! Repeal the pledge for PEPFAR! I think 
Where do we go from here? We have to take the next steps. The significance of having this conference here in America is enormous. We have, first of all, and as an example, an epidemic in the African American community where we 14% of the population, yet over 50% of new infections are African Americans. Southern states, newest epidemics, new infections in the South. We have African American women, two thirds of, of all infections among women. And so we have a major epidemic where in some communities the percentages are comparable to Sub-Saharan Africa. And so having the conference here really gives us a chance to shed some light on what we need to do here ending the discriminatory laws that uh, criminalize HIV and AIDS. We have 34 states in these United States that have criminal statutes on the books. Once again, I'm a member of the UN Commission on Global uh, Health, Global HIV AIDS and the Law, and we've identified countries that need to begin to lift these discriminatory practices. That's part of the discussion here at this conference, and so we are part of the world community, and finally we've had a conference here where we could share best practices and have people, all of you who have come from afar and from abroad to meet some of our wonderful people here who have some great ideas and who are moving forward, but of course we need additional resources for our national HIV AIDS strategy here, and we need additional resources for PEPFAR and for the Global Fund, and so we're working together finally to do this as a world community. Thank you again. I'm going to have to run to the hill to vote. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. You're a tremendous leader. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you all very much. The, the, let me, I think... And the goal of the action was to, it was two things. One, to ask Congress to repeal the anti-prostitutional loyalty oath. And the second was to ask them to support Barbara Lee's bill on criminalization, um, on stopping criminalization of marginalized populations, um, specifically sex workers and drug users, which also includes repealing the anti-prostitutional anti loyalty oath. It's really important for Congress to look at sex workers' rights from a, from a labor rights, workers' rights perspective and a public health perspective. We've learned that criminalization doesn't actually stop um, the spreading of HIV. The only thing that stops it is a public health response. And right now, sex workers in the United States, but also globally, are increasingly criminalized, driving sex work further underground, putting them at increased risk of HIV, violence, discrimination, policing, and criminalization. Being in a room where you're speaking out and you're being basically ignored, um, it feels not having any, like, you know, action taken back against you it, it, it is feels like it's almost worse than actually standing there and being ignored. Uh, in comparison to when you're lobbying and speaking to elected officials, uh, you're just, you're being listened to, you're being treated like more of a person. It was a little unsettling. It was also unsettling in the, when other people in the audience weren't allowed to do the question and answers. Uh, they basically tried to make the time run out on the clock so that other people's questions wouldn't be heard. Me as a transgender woman and uh, a former sex worker, and being there today, it just, showed me how much my human rights is still not accepted, you know, and before I'm anything, before I'm transgender, before I'm a sex worker, before I'm whatever, I'm human. 
you know, and I feel like I've been violated from my human rights. I have rights just like anyone else, regardless of what my sexual preference is, whatever, regardless of what my uh, career choices are, I'm human. And I feel like that is most important, looking at us and realizing that we are human just like anyone else is. You know, so um, I'm a transgender woman and so far I have only seen me and maybe two other transgender women actually at the conference being the delegate of the International AIDS Conference. So, you know, um, I think we did a good thing today. I think we stood our grounds. I think it, we have to continue on to do this. I think we need to continue on to fight for our rights and fight for other rights.